Hi, I'm John Ross. Uh, okay, this is the first video in my read making um, set of videos to explain how the, the, the read making kit is intended to be used. Now, you're going to need some extra tools, obviously, that are not supplied in the kit. I can't provide everything. All the rest of these tools um, are available commercially. So, um, you might... I'm working on my kitchen table here, so I don't want to damage the table. This is a useful little bit of kit. Um, it's just a clamp with a, a steel block on it and a, a jeweler's bench peg. So that just clamps onto the side of your table and that, that won't damage the table. Um, so you can use that for sawing onto or filing onto or hammering onto the block here. I find that useful. Now, you're going to need a little vice. This one, I've laid a piece of... Um, of plywood on the top of the table so as not to damage the table. Um, just clamp it onto the side of the table here. Um, you're going to need a measuring device. Uh, I, <laughs> I use this. This is a, a, a pair of vernier calipers that I've welded, uh, TIG welded, a couple of Allen keys onto and uh, I've set it up accurately so that this dimension is, is, is always is, is, is accurate it matches you know the the calipers so I can use this as a, a thickness gauge but other people use all sorts of thickness gauges to measure the thickness of your cane slip and uh, of course you can measure the width of the cane using this section of the you know the standard calipers but alternatively if you were to get a piece of um, um, silver steel as this uh, this is part of the kit anyway so this will be five millimeter thick silver steel rod now if you lay that along the length of the of the cane slip inside you can then subtract five millimeter from the thickness of cane and that'll give you the thickness of the of the of your cane slip so that's one way of measuring so vernier carapers i find very useful obviously a pair of pliers, scalpel, maybe a Stanley knife. I use a, a, a scraper uh, for uh, deburring metal or whatever. Um, but some people use a scalpel for the same job, but I prefer that. You're going to need some thread, suitable thread, obviously. You're going to need something like beeswax, while other people use other, other waxes. I use a little tray just to put any little bits and pieces in so they don't roll off the table. Uh, you might need a little um, tray of water, perhaps for soaking your reeds in, as uh, I use. I soak my reeds. Now, I personally use a jeweler's piercing saw, um, with, uh, which has very fine steel blades in, extremely accurate and very useful for cutting all, all materials, including metal, obviously. Uh, but you could use a um, um, junior hacksaw blade or something. Now I'll not be using most of the tools in this kit for this demonstration. I'll, I'll be using my own sanding block and my own gouge for instance. Um, I want to preserve this kit because this will be going out to a customer. Obviously the cane I'm using here I normally use uh, Medea cane. It's, it's perfect for the job. Um, but I bought this batch of cane from MPU and it's ideal, a lovely little straight length. They're about 130 millimetres long, um, approximately one inch in diameter. Um, and they're just really nice tidy bits of cane. So, uh, so that was from MPU. Um, you, the, the list of tools that you're going to need in addition obviously is not endless. And everybody has their own preferences. Uh, at some point, you're going to need a, a tuner of some kind to, you know, check the pitch of your reeds, etc. And maybe different, various different thicknesses of, of thread also. But uh, well, as the video goes along, I'll, I'll explain further. Um, so the the next video will be um, just cutting the slip, uh, gouging it, and sanding it, basically. Thank you.